I'm Terry Deary, best known as the author of Horrible Histories, and welcome to the glorious Georgians. I mean, history is horrible. For a start, everybody in history is dead, and some people are very dead indeed. Of course, history teachers don't tell you this, oh no. They drone on about boring battles and dusty dates and other foul facts. What you really want to know is the interesting stuff. How did people live and how did they die? George Frederick Handel arrived in England in 1711, at the end of the slimy Stuart's reign. We're going to hear about what life was like for George Handel in Georgian London, from what the filthy rich got up to, to how the poor managed to survive. We'll also find out more about what Handel was like. What did he enjoy eating for his dinner? Why did he wear a big wig? And how he managed to write such brilliant music. It made him number one in the Georgian charts. Some of the fashions became quite ridiculous in Georgian times. Dresses were worn over hooped petticoats. They came into fashion first with women in 1710 and went out of fashion in 1780. But at the royal court, they were still being worn over 40 years later. A writer complained that when one young lady walked down the street, she took up the full width of the pavement. Another common sight in Georgian Britain was the fan. Fans were waved in front of the ladies to keep them cool in the hot theatres. Some men complained that the fans were far more like windmills. They were decorated with pictures, but also with verses or songs or paragraphs from popular books. So if you got bored with the music, you could always read your fan. Ladies learned to use fan fluttering as a signal to people watching them. One flutter might mean anger, while another flutter might mean love. Fans were also useful to hide a lady's mouth if she had rotten teeth. And they could wave away the foul smell of their bad breath. <laughs> it's easy to poke fun the Georgian women, but the men were just as bad. They were known as fox, meaning hosers, and other ruder words. From 1660 to 1760, it was the century of the slapheads. Men wore wigs, even if they weren't old. They could be very expensive, so they were often stolen. Thieves would ride on the back of a carriage. They would carefully cut a hole through the back, snatch a wig off a passenger's head, and then jump off. But wigs could be nasty, filthy things. They could become full of bugs, and often men remove their wigs at night. Now, Handel was a celebrity in Georgia, London. You can imagine, had he been around today, he'd have had the paparazzi chasing him about and have pictures of him in his swimming trunks in Heat magazine. This meant it was especially important for Handel to look good. He didn't want his wig to be full of bugs, and he didn't want his wig to fall out of place to help make his wig stick to his head. Handel slapped on a load of white powder. Little did he know this action was killing him. Not from slapping, but from the lead in the powder, which would ultimately lead 
to lead poisoning. But more of this nasty business later on. An event that wouldn't have left the musicians in a very fashionable state would have been a performance of the water music in 1717. After George I had arrived from Hanover, he needed a big event in London to show off his power and one that he could put on a big party with. So he called on his old mate Handel to compose some music suitable for a grand gesture on the River Thames, and Handel's water music was born. It must have been quite an event with 50 musicians all crammed under one big barge. It probably got quite sweaty and smelly. Nothing seems to have changed much with musicians. Whatever the case, it was a big spectacle, and the king loved it. He enjoyed the music so much that he requested it be played three times and the musicians weren't paid overtime.
Georgian food. Ah, the Georgians were keen to try new things, especially food. One Georgian culinary invention is the Yorkshire pudding. Ovens were improved so you could roast beef and cook a butter pudding at the same time. So the Yorkshire pudding was born. The pudding was probably called that because it was eaten with roast Yorkshire terrier. <laughs> oh, no, only joking. The Yorkshire pudding was often used as a treat on Christmas Day. Now, Handel really enjoyed eating. Handel's biographer said that he was habituated to an uncommon portion of food and nourishment and had an inordinate extravagant hunger. This rather unflattering engraving of Handel was created and perhaps shows off his eating habits. What a pig, which is a bit cruel to pigs. Handel was also rather fond of drinking wine. Alas, not only was this having the usual effects that any alcohol would have, but it was doing even worse. It was stored in containers containing lead. So now he's slapping lead all over his head and drinking it. Some foods often contain things you wouldn't expect. London bread contained chalk and bone ashes, whilst milk contained quite a few extra things because it was open to the elements on a Georgian street. So there was dirt, tobacco, snot, you name it, it was in the milk. Here's a piece of music to make our stomachs feel a little better. Thank you. 